Hello, we are Sorted Food. A group of friends from the UK exploring the southern states of the USA. And after hitting up Charleston, we've now made it to Savannah, known for its beauty, food, and most importantly, southern hospitality. Because in true southern style, we want to give something back. So at the end of our trip, we'll be hosting a dinner party for a room full of Savannah locals. So we needed to learn fast and began by heading to a place so unique and highly recommended to us. Mrs. Wilkes dining room is just that. There is a huge queue to get in and you sit and you eat family style southern cooking with the people you're in the line with. So you're eating and communicating and enjoying the food with complete strangers. It's incredible. Just look at the spread. I mean, we were told about the generosity of Southern hospitality. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Literally mind blown. You're being invited into someone's home. It's incredible. It's the warmest atmosphere, and we haven't even been here five minutes. Marge welcomed us by saying we've been waiting 80 years for you to come, as if they expect everyone and everyone steps in is like a family member. No, she just thought you were that old. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point in even trying to tell you all of the food that's on here, but we're going to eat it and you're going to watch us enjoy it. How hospitable of you. <laughs> oh, the red rice. Uh, I've got oh, to try yeah, some. Oh, yeah, get that Savannah red rice. Everybody's just happy to make you feel comfortable. What are you drinking? Have a seat. But it goes beyond what are you drinking. It's, uh, they want to know about your family. They want to know where you're from. It's, uh, it's been one of the most amazing experiences living here for almost two decades for me, so. This is banana pudding, but here they call it banana pudding. So I'm already learning. Oh, that is creamy and sweet and really takes the edge off a banana. We've been here 80 years and my grandmother started the, this place in 1943. She was a really good cook, and she came here, and there was hardly anywhere to live at that time during the war. So she had 11 boarders that lived upstairs, and she cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner for them. My grandmother always said if we could all sit down and eat together, we wouldn't have to fight all these wars. And that's basically true. We very rarely have anybody that hesitates, you know, eating with other people. But if we ever do, after they do that, then they're best friends with them. It gives you a whole new perspective on family and life and, and how we're all the same all over, you know. It's a wonderful bit of the past that we're trying to hold on to. So much so that guests are asked to return their plates to the kitchen. So early impressions is that whatever we do, our table's got to look like that. So we either need a really small table <laughs> or we need a lot of food. The challenge is, it's just the three of us. Two normals, one chef. It was time to get out and explore. But before we could, I wanted to put my southern generosity to the test. The weather here is absolutely gorgeous. However, that comes with the need to protect ourselves against those UV rays. Do you have any of the parasols for, yep. for sale? Ebbers, I know you care deeply about history and your skincare. Excellent. Now you're a proper southern belle. <laughs> there you go. I already like Savannah. Yeah, I like it. Now we'd found our bearings, there was some serious work to do. Starting at Wiley's Championship Barbecue, where pitmaster Marion was waiting for us. Oh. So what have we got here? Mm -hmm. What we have is our famous redneck nacho. And what meat is in there? Pulled pork up under there. Now, let Falk just help you starve yourself to death. Do it easy. Put your finger <laughs> on it. Cheers. Cheers. That is fantastic. Redneck nachos. Now, you guys don't eat too much of that and get full, because we got some other stuff going on here for you. That brisket and pulled pork plate. Uh, fresh collard greens, broccoli rice and cheese, and our sweet potato casserole. We put it on an overnight cooking anywhere from 10 to 12 hours, 225 degrees on the smoker. You really can't rush it, because I've, I've tried to rush it. I've done it. I'd rather take my shoe off and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Wiley did a lot of touring before he opened the business. A lot of state fairs, a lot of circuits went around the world. Him, his SUV, and pulling one smoker behind him. <laughs> he competed, and as you see the trophies over there, that's how he made his money. 
and he, after he got to winning his championship awards and ribbons, that's what made him decide to call it Wiley's Championship Barbecue. A little bit of South in your mouth. Oh, Ebers, don't repeat that. It doesn't sound good in your accent. It's written above the... You didn't have to say it, though. Had to buy some of their better than sex sauce. Got to put it to the test at home. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> We were back on the road, and it wasn't long before something else caught our eyes. So we've just rocked up at this greengrocer's, which is in the car park of a petrol station. And we've just been overwhelmed by the generosity. Like, oh look, there's an okra. Would you like to try one? Uh, yeah. Look at the size of those peaches. Would you like to try one? Um, yeah. Oh look, they've got an incredible trifle. Would you like to try some? Just everything. It just is so generous. Wow. What you say? Wow. <laughs> Another thing to bring back home. Georgia boasts a coastline of over 100 miles, and we couldn't visit Savannah without heading out to the water. So it was time to make our way over to Tybee Island, where something special was waiting for us. We still had a lot of ground to cover, and Ben and I didn't want to share, so it was time to split up. You guys told us about Seaborg, combining the finer things in life with the downright dirty. We have a uh, rotating menu and we constantly get in the best oysters that we can. So we constantly keep a classic dog on our menu that's gonna be served with your regular toppings, relish, pickled onions, ketchup, mustard, mayo. Um, and then whenever we change our menu, we put a dog on there that's a little different, a little out there. And so this one right now is kind of based off uh, pork asabuco. So we have shredded pork that's uh, seasoned with everything you would use for asabuco, onions, feta, kalamata olives, and just a little bit of parsley on top. Cheers. Cheers. The coolness that I need. That is so good. Crisp, refreshing. I love the fact you get oysters, wine, or even champagne if you want it, and hot dogs. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It's a classic dog for a reason. I'll go around the back of your one. Served in a brioche roll. The style in which you'd get a lobster roll. Perfect. Thank you very much. Right, we've come to the Crab Shack on Tybee Island. Loads of people in the comments said that we had to come here. Highly recommended. It's beautiful. It's right on the water. However hot it is outside, or actually underneath, massive trees, so it's lovely and shady. We've got loads of information from the manager. Obviously, crab is their thing. Fried food, however, is not their thing. And the reason for that is that their kitchen sits above the water. And they're scared that if they have an accident with the oil, oil goes into the water, it ruins the whole ecosystem around them. Likewise, their shrimp, they proudly say the shrimp they have here is not local because they go through 5,500 pounds of shrimp every week. If they got it out of the water just here, they'd ruin the ecosystem within months. They obviously care a lot. Now, nine out of 10 people that come here get the crab platter, which looks incredible. But there's something else on the menu that caught our eye, deviled crab. Oh, wow. It's just like a crab cake. It's baked, not fried. And the manager told us, the best way to know if the crab you're getting is fresh is if you get a little bit of shell in there, because it shows it was hand-picked and it wasn't out of a tin. Cheers. That is really good. Um, this is a remoulade sauce to go with it. it has a really nice tang to that rich crab meat. It was time to reconvene for a unique Savannah occasion that's been taking the South by storm. Recommended by so many of you, the Savannah Bananas. And it was just that. It's sold out today. <laughs> and we're sitting by third place. Let me hear you scream! So here's something ridiculous. We've been put on the field by third base and we've been provided with a a plethora of banana-based dishes and ballpark food. Banana beer, which is actually fantastic. Trash can nachos, obviously, is a baseball game. I thought this was a banana milkshake. I took a massive swig of it. That is something quite alcoholic. <laughs> it's a slippery banana. It's a slippery banana. This is amazing! Cheers! 
I don't think I've ever eaten out of a trash can. With our backs to the game, it was time to turn away from the food and witness what was unfolding on the field. With one day behind us, our final location was Bar Julian, which boasts a stunning view across the city skyline. The perfect setting to relax and wind down from a manic but memorable day. It was a new day, and we've been told that B Matthews was one of the best spots in town to set us up for what was to come. All right, biscuits and gravy. Breakfast done proper. We've got classic. We've got fried chicken, obviously. Who orders that one? Well, yeah, I wanted variety. <laughs> for me, this is all about the texture of the biscuit and, dare I say it, the similarity to a scone or a scone. Hack into all their little secrets and work out exactly what makes the perfect biscuit. You're all the way over there. So here you go. Mmm. <laughs> This is very different to the gravy we would expect, but both of these are delicious. The white creamy, kind of heavy cream, roux-based, sausage spiced gravy with fluffy, bouncy, golden, delicious biscuits. It is, but it's got a bit of a chew to it. It's mm. like denser than I expected. So I'd say a scone at home is crumblier, it's drier, yeah. whereas this is far more moist. Yeah. It has that chew to it. So for something that looks very similar, it is quite different. And so we've been told, made with cold butter, buttermilk, and a lot of love. So provided we can get those three ingredients, we might be able to recreate it. So fried chicken, again biscuit, again gravy, but we've got pimento. Which is pimento something. cheese. Just going in, I'm going in, I'm going All in. All my personal space. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Doused in that wonderful gravy, I didn't notice how deliciously crispy the top of the biscuit was. Mm. Where here, that with the pimento, that on its own is a sensation before you even get to the chicken and the egg and the, the, the gravy. And a common running theme, it seems to be down here in the south, fruit. Fruit is so good everywhere we go and the melon in this is sensational. Really? Yeah. My only fear would be trying to recreate biscuits, given we've none done it before, for a table of experts. Yeah. That would be not just a fear, but close to a nightmare, I would imagine. I think that would be described as silly behaviour, Ben. <laughs> silly behaviour. So it obviously feels like we're going to do that, doesn't it? As long as it's made with love, we possibly we can't possibly go wrong. Breakfast done, and it was time to head down to the Wilmington River to meet Steve a local chef who's combined his love of food with his love of the water. Welcome on board the burger boat. It's a floating food truck. I always kind of dreamed of having my own place. We've been lucky that we've been able to do what we do, which is create food for cameras to share online and not have the day-to-day-to-day-to-day the -day -to -day -to -day of a restaurant. Right. But if I did have a restaurant, I think I want it on water. Hey, girl, what's up? Hey, I'm going to be in the Thunderbolt area all day, so tell y'all get hungry, come see me. All right? Love you guys, man. All right, here we go. You ready to go all 12 miles an hour? It was amazing to be out on the water, taking it easy with Steve, but it was time to head back to shore. 
because Steve had decided it was time for us to earn our keep. And after a quick induction on the grill, we were put to work. What can I get you? You said five with cheese, one without? Correct. It's kicking off. Mike's down the hot end. Just try really hard not to put him out of business. There's no opportunity here for Huffle Storm, because if that happens, it's game over. I'm hearing a lot of jibber jabber and not much pitter patter of patty melts. Uh, excuse me. I put some cheese on some bread correctly. Very trusting. That's the colour we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. Don't f <laughs> up. I think you have a future in this. <laughs> Thanks. This is the challenge, right? Like, this is it. Just had a big rush. We got them covered. A little bit of respite whilst we were waiting for Mike to make some more patty melts. And then it's on again. All right, Chef, I got you from here, bro. Yeah? Thank you so very much, man. You Thank you. You slayed it. Shift is over. Gloves going in the bin. Cheers. It was incredible to see how Steve and his southern hospitality fostered a sense of community on the water, and we were really starting to understand the rewards of it. Steve, thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> but now comes crunch time. You've had our two normals on board. What do you think of their efforts today? Are they going to become shipmates, or are you throwing them overboard? Oh, you know, nice. Uh, Which one's I, the good one of those two? I think we'll keep them around for a while, but you got to understand, you know, you can teach chimpanzees to do a lot of this stuff, <laughs> you know? When the cameras weren't rolling, you were being right. so complimentary. Right. Well, can I bring my sous chef in here? I just got to give her a shout out. Yeah. The whole team. Yeah. Let's, Ashley, get, come let's get a big group shot. Jack, yeah, Ashley, Jack, the whole gang. Oh, we're great today. I could right, not, yeah. I could not do it without oh, these yeah. guys right here, man. They, they make the whole thing go around, you know. But you I, know what? I'm everyone who's, everyone who's come up and had lunch with you today, everyone leaves with a smile. Thanks a lot, everybody. Oh, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure, man. Thank you it so much. It was really a pleasure, thank you. man. Thank you. Yes. Love you guys. Burger boat. Burger boat. In our next episode, we continue to explore Savannah's incredible foodie creations and sample the nightlife that Savannah is known for. <laughs> Not forgetting, of course, the huge challenge that still looms over us.